Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I have one of my donated items from Relink Medical. This is going to be a teardown and explanation of the Philips M3001 Alpha, also known as the brick. So these bricks, they were produced or are being produced. I don't know, are they still being produced? They, they've been produced for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. It's been a long time. And you clearly have a manufacture date on the back of them. And there's different variants of these, many different variants, and we'll go over some of those. They all use the same sort of communications port and they slide into the back of the patient monitor to which then the installed parameters are available over here. And they pop up on the monitor automatically. So this unit, it's uh, very simple. You can see I have arterial, or no, this one here does not. I have ECG respiration, I've got SpO2 and uh, NBP. Also, there will be a arterial and temperature. You can see that it's got a little offset right here. And that option is not on this one, unfortunately. It doesn't really matter, arterial. Um, you're gonna find that in operating rooms and ERs and stuff like that. Um, this is going to be the generic style that you are going to see pretty much throughout the rest of the medical facility or in little clinics. You can see there's a few buttons on the outside that you can activate it. There's a silence button. There's a start and stop. That's for the NIBP. And you have a zero button, which the zero button is normally to zero your transducer for this guy right here. But it's just easier just to keep it in there. I don't know if it does anything else on this. If you know, please let me know in the description below, down in the comments, because as far as I know, that's to zero the transducer for arterial. Because as you know, arterial, you have to zero it out before you can apply pressure. That way there, you have a baseline. There was a couple samples of some um, do not enter stickers on this U. And you can see I've got one example right here. I tore them off because those stickers are illegal gone. All right, companies, quit putting these stickers on, all right? It's got one option on the back, that is to hang the whole entire brick, and that's because you can also connect to this guy with a extension cable, and that happens all the time in operating rooms. This unit will be remote from the anesthesia machine patient monitor, that way there it can be closer to the patient. Now, Philips has several variants of this module, not just in the parameters over here but also in the software and one of the biggest indicators for the various software is this coloring right here which this one's got the teal but there are other colors that I think it's like beige or something like that it's been a long time since I've worked with Philips but you can see it, this one here is in probably an older version but that's okay because it still works with the majority of monitors the key thing to know is that the software inside this guy has to be compatible with the software in the patient monitor. So let's go ahead and take this guy apart. If you notice, there are no external fasteners on this. Philips has a very fascinating design engineer, whoever this person was, because it's very easy to take apart and at the same time, it looks so perfect. The build quality is just there. And the way you get this apart is right down here at the faceplate there are two little notches. You see one of them right down here and one of them right here. I take a small flat blade screwdriver and just kind of pop it in there and just rock it back and forth a little bit. And the face plate rocks right off. Let's pull it off this way too. And this one is, there it goes. All right, I didn't want to break it. So it, it is being retained by this upper lip. So you just got to rock it a little bit further. As things get older, plastic gets a little more brittle and I'm trying to be a little more careful on them. So from here, if you take a look, it's got these rods. So I've got one rod, two rods, three and four. And again, the small flat blade screwdriver, kind of pop it in there. See, I just kind of roll it and that pin wants to pop right out. And then you pull the rods out. Can you see that? Let's go ahead and pop the other ones out. Come on. There we go. 
I should use one size smaller of a flat blade screwdriver to get in there a little bit better, but it is what it is, guys. And I've got one more. Just genius. Whoever designed this, if you guys know who designed it, let me know. I would commend them. And believe it or not, those four rods right here are what hold this bad boy together. So now we can split it apart like a clamshell. I want to be very careful so I don't spill pieces everywhere. <laughs> Come on. There we go. All right. You can see here it is. And here is the inside. Now, what you want to be careful of um, is that these boards have interconnects here and here. So if you take this guy apart, make sure you take the boards apart linear to one another. So you kind of rock them back and forth and you pull it apart. So this is the non-invasive blood pressure pump and it's got um, a plenum, a whole bunch of stuff in there, different valves. And one of the things I can tell you is based on the manufacture date, which is 2005, and the pump having a date of 2005, that's original pump. So if this guy had any sort of NIBP problems, I would probably just change out the NIBP. And here you can see it just kind of pulls out. Be very careful. There's a little ribbon cable right there. We'll get to that in just a minute. All right, so now I want to dissect these boards. See how I pull up this side right here really lightly? Now this side right here, I'm going to separate. There we go. See how I'm using my fingers to create even pressure? And here is the first board. Um, now this one here looks like a power board. You can see that I've got some transformers and I've got some power regulation. There's power regulation over here as well. This one here looks like some sort of power distribution board, all right? I don't see any real CPU on there. I can tell that there's one power phase over here, probably a main voltage regulator right here someplace anytime you see a large capacitor. So if I had a problem with this thing not powering up, that would probably be the board I would change out. So now you can see the NIB pump. I can't talk today. The NIBP pump. And the ribbon cable is really unique on these things. So you can see that there is a through via for this pump. And it's really easy, as you can tell. It's super easy to change out this pump. But this guy right here is often the problem with these modules. So this guy has stood the test of time. It's from 2005. Probably still good, I bet. So now you can see that I have several other different interconnects. One of the most important one is the one for the port right here. It connects right here. And again, it just pulls up nice and easy. This port is actually changed out quite often from probably usage and abuse. It's, it's gonna be one of your more common repairs on these modules. And let's see if I can get this guy out. Ah, I don't know if I can, not in this angle. We'll pull it up. So the power buttons, again, they just press in nice and easy. This guy was actually designed so that you could flip it over. That's your main CPU board right there. And based on some of the chips, I would say that this guy also does all the I.O. Anyway, what can I see down in here? Um, this module right here will come apart quite easily. This whole frame is going to separate. It's been a long time since I've done it, but still I would like do it for you guys in order to get this this little um, port out uh, let's see what else do we got down in here it says 1990 no kidding wow is it really okay so you can see that there's a dovetail right here and this whole entire unit will slide off and that will include this port. There it goes, there it goes. It's been a while since I've had to do it. There, <laughs> just required a little bit of up force. Very genius design. So one of the most common repairs that you're gonna do is changing this guy out right here. It's got a dovetail 
right there, you can see it, it just slides on, bam. Right here is the male dove, this is the female. And let's see if I can get this port right here out. Nice and easy. So because these pins are all linear, you gotta just be very careful to make sure that you apply even pressure down the port. The way I do it is I stick my screwdriver down there and I rock it just a little bit. So you're talking a millimeter to half a millimeter at a time. There we go. So now it's broke loose. Now I have the option to go back and very lightly guide it upwards. Yes. Notice how I'm not going all the way up. Just a couple millimeters each way. You want to keep all those pins nice and in a line, linear. Okay, now it's almost completely at the top. There we go. All right. Yes. Here we go. So this is that CPU board. Pretty cool. That's where all your software is flashed to. And now let's get to the other side of this bad boy. Uh, let's see, how do we do that? I do not think I have ever gotten to the other side of, of this uh, device. Let's see if I can get a bite down here at the end. There it is, there it is. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I just went down to this end with the ribbon cable and I was able to get a very light bite. Very easy. So you do want to pay attention to the fact that it does have this rubber seal around the perimeter. Make sure that that seal is not damaged. Okay, the big reveal. What is on the back side? All right, so here are your option boards. And you can see I'm missing the option for the arterial. That's okay. Interesting enough, I wonder if it's possible to just upgrade it. Who knows? But if you have a problem with your ECG, this right here is the, uh, the actual board. And from what I can tell, that is normally a ROM. And I don't know, let's see if I can pull those out. <laughs> that would be so cool. I've never pulled these boards out of here before. Okay, I can see some retainers down here. Yep. All right. There's one. There's two. Where are the other retainers? Probably on the other side of this guy, aren't they? Yep. <laughs> okay. So the retainers are, you see these little holes right here, right here, right here, and right here? Just little plastic latches. So all I had to do is stick this down in there and just the tension of the wedge just unlocked it and they wanna fall right out. All right. So that is the backside of the chassis. And here are your option boards. Very cool. Um. I wonder why that is. For the ECG, there are a series of lamps, but those are not going to be used as lamps in this, this guy. All right. I'm going to peel up this ribbon cable nice and easy. Okay. So be wary. This is a ribbon cable. It's more like a jumper. It goes from one side to the other. Looks like it's all one plane, so I wonder if that's just a ground plane, a jumper from one side to the other. Okay, here we go. And you see that they have all of these lamps, and these are not gonna be lamps. These are gonna be isolators for your ECG. So there's a lot of uh, technology, uh, things that we do nowadays that they didn't used to do. And these will isolate not only the electronics from the patient, but more importantly, the patient from the electronic. And they have all these little 
they're they're not even really lamps they look like they're lamps see that but what they are is they're going to be isolators almost like vacuum tubes kind of like little vacuum tube diodes i don't know if you guys know what these are specifically they look like uh the old school incandescent lamps but they're clearly not because they're what they are is they're isolating the port from the electronics. Very cool though, very cool. I see also right here, there is a isolation transformer of some sort. Very neat. And uh, the NIBP comes through here. The SPO2 is this board right here. So this board is going to be handling the SPO2. And I don't know which version of SPO2 is going to be on this unit. Is it going to be Massimo? Is it going to be um, Nelcore? Isn't it Nelcore Fast? Something like that. I don't know. You guys tell me. Don't really know. It's been a long time since I had to deal with these. But if you need to swap out one of these boards, you could do so. So all you got to do is pull the port and it's going to connect here to the back end. Just probably plug straight in like those ones. No problem. So anyway guys, um, I know that was kind of a crude teardown and maybe crude explanation of what's going on in there, but nonetheless, it's absolutely fascinating and I think that this guy has got probably some of the best engineering I have seen in a medical device in a long time. Everything is designed to be repairable, field replaceable. The boards are separated. I do like it. So if you have a problem with one different option, you can swap it out or you can upgrade it. Maybe I think the software is upgradable. Um, very interesting. The parts are easily replaced. I really dig that. So <laughs> that's quite a few components if you think about it inside that brick, but nonetheless, it is what it is, and I have seen these in the field for years, and they've been absolutely fantastic. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. This is my little teardown of the M3001 Alpha Phillips, and I have to say this is one of my favorite medical devices I have ever used. Thanks to Relink Medical for donating this guy. I'm going to get this guy back together, and we're going to actually do an explanation of the patient monitor and the teardown of the patient monitor, the MP50, I think, the one that they sipped over with this guy. We'll take a look at that next.